my dear friends, welcome back. Uh, I'm so glad that you're, that you're joining us again. Remember that we're trying to preach and teach the Word of God with integrity. So hopefully from, from our church you will never hear any lies um, and that you will hear the, the Word of God as close to the fountain where it's from as possible. And so nobody is perfect, I know that, so, but we are trying to do um, um, just that. So um, we are talking about the problem of faith and works. What's actually bringing you salvation? Is it your works or is it your faith? And um, there's an interesting thing um, in, uh, in the Reformed tradition. Uh, a man like Martin Luther would say, it's only through faith that you are saved. And which is absolutely true. Um, but there was also a movement at some stage um, that said that you are actually saved through your works, not through faith. And there was a man with the name of Pelagius. And Pelagius um, said, you can't be saved only through faith. You are actually saved through your works. So um, th that's an interesting thing that we're talking about. So, but um, before we're going to read a passage and talk about it, just let us just bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your love and your kindness. Thank you for this opportunity we have to listen um, to your word, Lord. And will you open your word for us? And so that we have a good understanding of what you want us to know. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So friends, we're reading from James. And James chapter 2 from verse 14. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, be warmed and filled without giving them the things needed for the body. What good is that? So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that God is one. You do well, even the demons believe and shudder. Do you want to be shown, you foolish person, that faith apart from works is useless? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up his son Isaac on the altar? You see that faith was active along with his works and faith was completed by his works. Well, friends, that's our little chapter or our little passage that we're talking about. And the interesting thing uh, that James is telling us is that um, uh, your faith is dead if you do not have your works. So rather concentrate on works um, rather than say you have faith but you have no works. Um, because um, through your works... You can say, you can show your faith. Now, friends, um, there's a new development in the last, uh, I think, 20 years. I don't know how many years. Um, and what that was the dawn of quantum physics. Now, we have a macro universe and we have a micro universe. And in the macro universe, there's a lot of laws that we already know and that we understand and that we use and utilize in whatever we do, um, building bridges, building rockets, um, building structures on Earth, and we use the macro physics um, for doing that. But there's also a micro um, universe, and the micro universe is totally different from the macro universe, very, very interesting. And maybe, our human beings um, and the way we do things are more on the micro universe than on the macro universe. And when you look at that, there's, um, 
there's a new um, principle that's been um, uh, th that's been found or discovered by quantum physics or in quantum physics, and that is the dual particle wave uh, principle. Um, for instance, that's that's the thing that in atoms you have little particles um, called protons and neutrons and photons and whatever, and we think of them as little ball-like things, like little particles that like, that, that looks like a small little um, ball. And um, you think that that little particle behave like a, a, a little particle, a little ball, then a ball bearing, think about a very small, tiny little ball bearing ball. And um, that if, if, if you shoot them, uh, they behave like, like tennis balls would behave, bounce back and so on. But then they realized a very interesting thing, that these little particles can either be a wave or they can be a little particle. And it's the same thing, but it sometimes behaves like a wave and sometimes it behaves like a little bearing ball, a ball bearing little ball bearing ball. So uh, that is a, a little bit of an uncertainty thing and it changes when you observe them. So it becomes very complicated to me, and as I said, I'm not a scientist, um, so it, it, it just baffles me a little bit. But what's interesting in our passage is that if, if you think about quantum physics, quantum physics would say that faith and works are exactly the same thing. Um, you can't separate the two. And, and then it's a very interesting thing that James also used the, the principle of measurement. How can you measure faith? You can measure faith, but you can measure the works. And the, the moment you start to measure things, the uncertainty principle kick in. And, um, and that's exactly what happens here. There's uncertainty between works and faith. Is it works that you save through or is it faith that you will save through? And suddenly, with quantum physics, we realize that they're actually the same thing. There is no difference. So if you don't have works, you don't have faith. And if you don't have faith, you don't have works. It's the same, actually the same thing. So if somebody tells you that he believes in Jesus Christ and that he has faith, and um, that he... Um, goes to church and tell everybody about his faith and loves Jesus, so he says, and uh, participate in worship, participate in church activities. But on Monday morning, um, he treats everybody with disrespect. He cheats wherever he goes. He lies wherever he goes. He's dishonest in his business and in, in his tax um, situation. And uh, he's dishonest with um, his workers and clients and whoever. And um, he is um, stealing from people. Um, and uh, he is uh, exploiting his workers. Then that man doesn't have faith. He, he might tell you on Sunday that he has faith, but he doesn't. Because it's the same thing. If you don't have works, you don't have faith. So, in a sense, uh, James is telling us that that guy is just faking it. He's not, he's not a real believer because he doesn't have the works. And that's a wake-up call for us, I think, friends, is that the time of Christianity as just believing is over. Um, uh, and I'm, my challenge today to you is that <clears throat> show your faith in works. That's my challenge. Show your faith in works. Friends, the world needs Christians. Um, and I said last week, and I said it in church as well, maybe, and there is not really anything beneficial for you for being a Christian. But it's beneficial to the world that you are a Christian. 
And that's the big principle. I was always thought in my life that um, my Christianity should be beneficial to me personally. And it never was. But one day when I realized that it's beneficial to the world that I'm a Christian, then things changed dramatically because now I suddenly realized that my job is works in the world. Because that's why I'm a Christian. To make the world bearable, to make the world a better place. And I'm just like a slave. I, I can't expect special treatment from my employer because I'm just a slave. It's the same with Jesus. You can't expect special treatment from Jesus because you're a Christian. But the world deserves that special treatment from you as a Christian. The interesting thing is that, um, think about countries that's mostly Muslim today. 20, 50 years back, there were about 20% Christians in those countries, and they were better, the, the countries were better places. Today, there's only maybe 5% Christians in those countries, and those countries are in big, big trouble. Um, they're a nightmare to live in. So, friends, that shows you. As Christians, we need to show our faith in this world with our good deeds, with our behavior, with, um, the, um, with the decisions we make. That's the way. There is no other way. And uh, my challenge to you is that you show your faith in your works. Do good. Be good in this world stop lying stop cheating um, stop breaking things or people down it's not on it's not for a christian um, be honest be good be solid amen heavenly father we thank you lord for this beautiful passage from james james that is um yet again challenging us to show our faith in our works, in our decisions, in the way we treat other people, Lord. To you all the honor and the glory forever and ever. Amen.